Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble. We're live from Harlem, right here in New York City until midnight tonight. Mm-hmm. Well, it's that time I always look forward to. The lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Happy, uh, happy July. I haven't seen you in a while or talked to you in a while. Is this July? Yeah. Almost the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we're coming up on August, and then October, then November, then December, then January, February, March, April, May. And somewhere, somewhere I will die. Okay. So. <laughs> that, that, that's what gives me the, the, uh, 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 the future to look forward to, you know. Like, I went to the dentist yesterday, and they finished off a, a root canal on a front tooth, okay? Oh, yeah, you told me you were having some major work done. Yeah, yeah. So I, it, it was like a serious uh, root canal because it had a lot of pus. They love saying that. You have lots of pus. Uh, and uh, that's the term you don't want to hear uh, it, when it refers to any part of your mouth or your penis, okay? So anyway... Um, I, uh, I went to them and they, uh, they did this really extensive root canal. And then I had to go back yesterday and they finished off the second half of the root canal. And now I have to go back on Thursday. This is all the way up in Scarsdale. Uh, the dentist actually picks me up and takes me there and they're really? going to, they're going to finish off the, uh, root canal. So, you know, and how much does this cost? I don't know. I'm figuring. I'm figuring. And then they got to do the front tooth. There's a root canal needed, but we're not doing it yet because I don't have any problems with it. And uh, because I have this one front tooth that sticks out, it's been sticking out for years, and now it needs a root canal. Uh, but I don't want to do that till like the first of the year if I don't have to, because then my insurance kicks in again. You know. So. Uh, uh, that, that's my that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Boy, I'm telling you, I just I just hate it with this dentist stuff. Yeah, is it? Uh, someone told me a root canal is expensive, but it's not really that painful. No, it's not. Nothing in dentistry is painful, particularly. You know, um, it, nothing is particularly painful. Uh, uh, it, it, once they get the Novocaine in you, you really don't feel much of anything. You might feel a pinch now and then or something like that. So, you know, yeah, root canals. You know what's terrible about root canals? Having to keep your mouth open for an hour. That gets very sore, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's just annoying, you know. And she she's a very good dentist, you know, but very thorough, very thorough. So... Yeah, and she she picks you up. I've never heard of it. Well, the thing was, they have an office. They had an office here in New York City, and they ha are they're waiting on uh, an okay to move into a new office, which has been taking months now. So they have an office up in Scarsdale, and so she's been picking me up for these appointments. And yesterday, she paid for me to take a lift back to New York, which is about a fifty dollar ride. So. But that's service, isn't it? You know? That is, yes. It's, uh, Scarsdale was known for a diet, and uh, wasn't there a doctor that killed somebody famous in there? Yes, there was a doctor, oh, Turnauer or something like that. can't remember his name exactly. And there was this woman involved. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I believe that was also in Scarsdale. You're right. And there is the Scarsdale diet. I forget what the Scarsdale diet is, but, you know. It, what it, the Scarsdale diet is is you go to Scarsdale, get a root canal, and you can't eat for three days. I think that's what the Scarsdale <laughs> yeah. diet you, is. You can't afford food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and it's not that far, you know. I mean, it was, it's a $50 ride by Lyft. 
It was about what I would pay for a lift to go down to the bottom of Manhattan. Yeah. So you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty 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 uh, 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 cheap so, in a way. Yeah. So that would be a suburban area. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's a, what, yesterday, I think it only took him about 25 minutes to get me back. Yeah. So anyway, so that was what I was dealing with, and I took a whole week off from the shows because I was in, I, I, I was in pain. I was in, after the first visit, a lot of pain because we were waiting for the antibiotics to kick in and so on because I had a real infection. In fact, I notice I feel physically I feel better now that we've taken care of that infection so this could be an infection i've had for months and it's just been dragging down on me and you don't know it you know um so sure but, yeah so I, it, isn't it wonderful you and i get together to entertain the public and we wound up talking about infections and pus and health issues that's what we're known for we, well i mean come on is there anything else and you had a woman dentist, which used to be almost unheard of. Hey, I th- you know, I, I think you're right. Uh, and her husband, she her husband works with her. Sometimes he works on me. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, you're right. I think den- I'm sure there are a lot of female dentists now, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, wonder if they have a high suicide rate. It, there is a high suicide rate for for dentists, isn't there? That's supposed to be the highest, yeah. Well, you know what it is. I got to tell you, I, I, it's got to be of all the things you could be doing. It has to be the most boring of the medicines, because really, it's more like carpentry, and every day you're building the same house over and over yeah. and over again. You know. It looks like it would be, uh, that'd be kind of difficult work, too. You're in someone's mouth. Uh, oh, no, I, I, you know, I told her yesterday, I said, you're a real craftsman. You know, I mean, she goes in there and she does what she's got to do, and she doesn't, she doesn't let anything go by her. In other words, where some dentists will say, eh, a little infection in there, and that'll clear up. She wants it out of there, you know. So uh, she's, a very, she's a very good dentist. Uh, and I have no, my only qualms with them is that I've obviously had this cavity uh, this uh, that needed a root canal for quite a while. And they didn't pick it up in any uh, of their, uh, uh, what do you call it, x-rays. Uh, and I, I don't know why. I think I asked her and she said, well, it's because it was in a place where it was hard for us to see it, even on an x-ray. So, but, you know, I feel better. I feel 100% better than I did a, a couple of weeks ago. I used to wake up in the morning and my mouth, uh, lips were all swollen and everything, and that's gone now because I think it had to do with the infection. You know, so, how's your health? Uh, <laughs> I guess it's uh, okay. Well, you don't take care of it, though. You're like, you're supposed to get a hernia operation. I just, I just let things go forever, yeah. Yeah, and so you haven't gotten the hernia operation. You, you, you had to get your eyes done, right? Yeah, I'm still waiting for an appointment on that. So. See, that, that's the easy one. That's a, that's a walk in the park. That's I, what I, I hear. Yeah, I've had two of those. What do they call them? Uh, 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 cataract. Cataract surgery. I've had two of them. And, and how much did your vision improve? It it improved slightly at the time, but it's back. It's now back to being kind of bad. It doesn't. It, it doesn't really improve your vision. It's not supposed to, but it may be a side effect. But it's not supposed to. What it improves is if you've got if you've got like a little dot of blurriness in one eye and in the, in the like in the center or whatever. Bubbles, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Uh, no, do, are you, are you getting a? Um, do you have like a blurriness in the center of your eye? It's like I just can't uh, read like uh, signs, lettering like I used to. But uh, I used to have 2010 vision not that long ago. I'm. I used to have great vision. You know, yeah. but as you get older, 
I mean, come on. Yeah, and people that I know our age are getting like this thing called macular degeneration, which sounds really bad. What is macular degeneration? I guess you go blind. There's no cure, but it's pretty common. Wow. Well, I, I, I haven't gotten that yet. I mean, Nick. Haven't, I, haven't you heard the Henry Winkler ads all over radio for the? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's all about. This is Henry Winkler. You don't want to lose your sight and blah, blah, blah. Macular degeneration. Well, you know, I mean, I've had, let's see, I've had two cancers. Does that count as getting older? You know? I mean, I had the prostate cancer, and I think that's pretty much gone. Uh, and uh, it's not returning. Um, but uh, I've, now I have, um, uh, what do you call it, um, um, leukemia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chronic, CLL, it's called. Chronic lympho, lymphatic, uh, um, whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, but they it, said you could, uh, that's, you can live with that. They say this is something you don't die from, you die with it. Okay. You know. So it's it's a condition that I have to, they have to constantly keep an eye on. I go back, I'm going back next week for a visit. He's been scheduling me now every four months, and probably this time he'll say come back in six months. Uh, they just want to see that you uh, don't have no symptoms. And if you have no symptoms, they don't do anything about it, you know. And it could be that I can have this for the rest of my life and never have symptoms. So, uh, you know, and if I have symptoms, I take a, one pill a day, and that takes care of it. So, you know. Well, that's easy. Yeah. So, so I got the leukemia. Okay. All right. You know, <laughs> eighty-four years old, I got leukemia. I, I bet a lot of people have it. I've known a lot of older people that get it. You know. I think you live long enough, you'll get everything. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that little fact. You know. Well, I just say, uh, yeah. If there's a god, he's a very mean. Huh? Well, you know what happens is, you, I've mentioned this before, as you get older, like I'm 84 now, when, and you go to the doctor and they find a little something, like I have a couple of little nodes on my lungs. I've had one of them since uh, 2016, okay? Uh, and, and that's long enough to say it's benign. It's, it's not doing anything. It hasn't changed size. It hasn't done anything, Okay. And I have another one. We don't know how long I've had that one, but in the last couple of visits, it's not grown, and it is a type of node on the lung that it very rarely, if ever, is is uh, cancer. So it's undoubtedly benign. Now I get so I get my thing back last year, and there are two the two nodes are still there. Okay, but they haven't grown. They haven't done anything. My doctor sends me a thing this year. Here, go get another check. Go get another CT scan on your lungs. And I'm saying to myself, wait a minute. None of these things are dangerous. What are you doing? You know, I yeah. don't. Want, I I refuse to get another one. You know, because what are they going to do? They're going to find something. Eventually, I imagine another node will show up or something. You know, I mean, I you know, but when as you get older. They don't want to take any chances with you. And quite frankly, when you're older, that's when they should take chances with you. <laughs> well, we, could have, we should have been like Steve McQueen and died at 50. Yeah, well, I've, I've thought about... I, I've never... I've used a lot of drugs in my lifetime, but I've never tried heroin. And I've been thinking about trying heroin just because at my age, <laughs> well, what's the problem? <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, so. uh, sounds like it must be an amazing feeling, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I feel uh, I, I feel brave at the, for the first time in my life because I've made it to I've made it to eighty four or eighty four. You know, that's, that's going amazing. Eighty five in December. You know, and I you, you say to yourself, well. You know, I must have done something right because people well, you are. You don't sound eighty four. Well, people are dropping like flies around me. You know, I mean, a couple of weeks ago we lost Christy. 
uh, who was my producer in San Francisco, and you knew her very well. And what a walk you got! Wonderful person, and I think wonderful. she was only fifty-seven. No, she was sixty-one, I think. Okay, that's well, still young. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, and uh, you know, so well, I guess only the good die young, right? Isn't that the same? Yeah. So why am I this old? Ah, I was a. Pr- <laughs> I guess we're bad. I people. guess I was a major <laughs> prick. You know. <laughs> Uh, all those years of being nasty, I think, paid off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then in my old age, I got really nice, so I go, I got you, God. Got you. You know. But I don't believe in God, because if there was a God, there wouldn't be a prostate. Okay? so Yeah, so, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> so much for intelligent design. Yeah, yeah. Do you get, do you get up in the middle of the night to pee? Uh, uh, yes, yes. How many times? A couple. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to get more and more as you go on. That's because your prostate gets larger. It squeezes down on the tubes, the uh, uh, urine tubes leading uh, through the prostate. See, the the tubes to the urinary tract, your urinary uh, tubes, go right through the prostate, which is like a donut. And as you get older, that donut starts to swell up and press on your urinary tract. And you have to wake up four or five times a night. I used to get up sometimes six, eight times a night to pee. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that that's God, ladies and gentlemen. That's his grand design. <laughs> You know, I've always said the best, the one thing about it makes me believe in a God is uh, the fact that we're here. Look at me. You know, my father fucked my mother, and then uh, my sp- his sperm hit her <laughs> egg, and then I turned into this thing that has all these organs and hands and everything that work, right? And so how can you, how can you see that and not believe in some higher power? I guess. I mean, are you a big God believer? No, no. Neither am I. But I, I do believe that uh, there is a uh, 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 some kind of higher power in the universe that allows this to happen. Because you got to admit, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I think the God thing is. I think people with human ego make a God kind of like themselves, you know. So, like you said, it could be a higher power. There's nothing like we anything we know. Yeah. Well, you know, anybody who has an ego should just stop and think that the reason you're here is because your mother and your father got horny one night and fucked. Exactly, <laughs> yes. You know, I I, I asked, uh, I, I, I decided there was one question that you never ask your parents. I bet you never asked your parents this question. Under what conditions was I conceived? <laughs> because you're No, gonna, I didn't ask them that, no. Yeah, yeah well, I asked, my, I asked my mother. I wow. uh, One day I said, you know, this is a question you don't ask your parents, but I wanted to know under what conditions I was conceived. And here's the story I got. They moved into a new apartment. They were waiting for the furniture to arrive, and they had nothing to do, so they fucked. <laughs> and that's how I came to be. You know, you want to hear a story like, well, you know, your father loved me so much, and one night we were so in love with each other that we decided we wanted to have somebody to join us. And so we engaged in sex in order to make sure that I would uh, uh, get uh, pregnant. And uh, you want to hear that kind of story, not we were waiting for the furniture. And while we were waiting for it, there was we got there. We had a rug. So we fucked on the floor. And here you are, kid. You don't want your parents to be as horny as we are. Oh, yeah. Well, they were, you know. I don't know how horny they got in those days. I, I don't know. I, I You know, with with, uh, with men, uh, we think about sex almost constantly, you know? It's a curse. It's yeah. a curse. I mean, I don't, at my age, I don't anymore because of the prostate stuff and everything. 
And I feel that all that has given me my dignity back. Exactly, yeah, me but, too. But, you know, I'm watching the Olympics and I'm watching the women on the, you know, the, the, with the parallel bars where they're swinging around and everything. And I went, yeah, great sport, Marjorie. She said, why, why do you think that? I said, great wedgies. <laughs> all these women have wedgies. <laughs> You know, and I'm enjoying the Olympics as long as they all have their back to me. You know, you got wedgies, wedgies. And and she says to me, well, you guys are all alike. And I went, so if in some sport here, there's a guy comes out in a swimming suit. Do you look for the bulge? She says, of course I do. (laughs) I said, you women are all alike, you know. They're just more subtle about it. Well, we're, you know, we are, we're, we're uh, horny monsters, guys, you know? And and uh, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Um, but, uh, that's just the way we're built, you know? And we're built by nature to be that way, and there's some reason for it. Uh, and uh, it's just that we now live in times where women have more control over their bodies, the pill changed everything, you know. And so now the nature and the relationship between women and men has kind of been altered by that, you know. So, what do you think about our uh, the vice president nominee for Trump who th- feels that any people who don't have kids shouldn't basically have the right to vote? He said that. Basically. I didn't hear that. Yeah, because we don't have an investment in America. And I was watching an interview with Pete Buttigieg with, uh, with uh, John Stewart on The Daily Show. And he answered it by saying, you know, I, I adopted children because I'm gay. And so we adopted. But we didn't have children. He said, but I served in, uh, in Iraq. And I, you know, serve my country. I mean, don't I have an investment in it? Don't I get to vote under, uh, you know, uh, what's his name's idea uh, that you got to be have kids in order to really have an investment in America? I think if you have an investment in America, you don't have kids and leave more parking spaces for other people. Uh, that's true. I've always felt that way. It's just uh, you're not contributing to overpopulation. Why are why don't we get a tax break instead of a penalty? That's correct. You're absolutely right. And that, that we're talking to the childless Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> the, the pagan. <laughs> uh, you've never had kids, right? Not that I know of. No. Not that you know of. We, uh, I say the same thing, not that I know of. I, I do have a kid somewhere. Uh, but uh, I, the kid could very well be gone by now. You know, I had him when I was 19, and uh, that would make him well, what? 19 minus 84. He'd be 65. 65. He could very easily be dead. You know. <laughs> At least he's getting social security. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I I added it all up, and I figured he, he, my my son is Howard Stern. So, you know. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, so how, otherwise uh, we got a few minutes here. How, how have you been? Uh, good. We've had an unbelievable heat wave out here. I had to, actually I had to cancel a gig in uh, the valley, Lodi. It was uh, 114 in an outdoor show. Did you cancel it or did they cancel it? They asked me. They said, "I said I'll do it, but I think it's it's out there. I think it's going to be a safety issue." And they said, "Yeah, you're right." So yeah, they re, they rescheduled it. 114 out in the valley. My God. Yeah, we've never... been uh, in Sacramento. I think it was like over a hundred for. It's been 14 days in a row. Well, because I know Sacramento used to get warm, but I don't remember getting that warm continually. You know, they might have a hundred, uh, hundred, 114. So, 114 is just it's humongous, humongous. Yeah, yeah. So you had to cancel the gig. Yeah. Oh well. I well, think it's better than people dying, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. 
Hey, I killed him out there. Well, actually, I had nothing well, we to had do with that, it. It was the, the heat. gig you did the Frost Amphitheater in '87. It was 104. But it was, wasn't it? Yeah. And you could and that see was, that was sweltering. And you could. We had this crowd of 8,000 people sitting on a lawn. But you could see as the sun changed, the shadow area changed, and you could see the whole dynamic of the of the audience shifting. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, I uh, I got to go here, and so do you. Uh, but let's do this again next week, okay? Yes, we'll have dueling root canals. Ladies and gentlemen, if I don't have any root canals is hurting me too much, we'll see Larry Brown next week right here, <laughs> same time, same station. Thank you, Larry. You got it. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Larry, for having joined us tonight. And uh, we enjoy him. And let me turn on the uh, lights here. There we go. Now you, now you can see me. Right? Okay. Good. Well, anyway, hello. How are you? It's uh, it's Friday already. And, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll let people on and then I'll talk about whatever I'm going to talk about. We only have, uh, let's see, three people waiting here. Uh, but, you know, um, it's quality. All right. We got uh, Charlie Wallace, and we've got Josh Wheeler, and we've got Jeffrey Stein, and uh, here comes Vernon Nunn. All right. So far, a nice, intelligent crowd uh, has joined us. And uh, hello to all of you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie, your, uh, your, um, your microphone isn't on yet. Does it take it a while to kick in? See, he can't even hear me. Uh, let me let me tell, let me send him a little thing that says, um, uh, "Let's see here, where is it? Oh, well, there's Roberta. Okay, let me get mm-hmm. her. Okay. Uh, oh, there. See, Charlie. You, uh, Charlie, you got to turn on your audio. Charlie, Charlie. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's his what's his problem. I don't know. Where now he's gone over to the other room. Uh, he's gone. It says over. connecting to audio. Yeah, Maybe well, he he, he has it. to do it on his end, and he hasn't done it yet. Let me see here if I can uh, mm. uh, ping him. Oh, there we go. Now you can hear us, Charlie, right? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, and Vernon Nunn's with us, and Roberta's with us again. We love having Roberta here. She's a newer newer addition to our group, and she. Uh, is a welcome addition to our group. And um, Jeff is here. And uh, Josh, good to see you. Josh, how you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm suffering the Olympics, okay? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I don't care for that either. Yeah, well. Oh, I love it. Track and field starting today. <laughs> well, you know, I... I don't mind the Olympics. I just mind the Olympics when they suddenly assault me with it. You know? Um, two weeks. Hmm? Got to do it all. Well, well last here's weeks. the thing. Here's the thing. You got that five, that 630 newscast, right? Lester idiot Holt, okay? And, <laughs> and Lester Holt does the news, or he says he does the news. But instead, <laughs> that 630 newscast has become a sports cast. And I want the I want the news. I'm sorry. I don't want your lousy promotion self promotion for the Olympics. <laughs> their their lead story today was, I don't know, some idiot story about somebody winning and somebody losing. Okay? And then they got to the news. But what was the big story today? It was I think the, the people being returned from Russia, right? Yeah. That should have been the lead story, but they made the lead story the Olympics. Now, what's that? CNN all about? used to do that all the time. I mean, tons and tons of great stories, and they're there talking about you know what they're doing in their cooking <laughs> in the kitchen. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. They, 
they pay a lot for the rights to show the Olympics, so they got to get their money back. No, but that, that's it. that's fine. But when it's time to do the news, do the goddamn news. Don't do a sports uh, show, okay? Am I wrong? How, uh, uh, am, I, am I wrong? Well, it's not right or wrong. I mean, you have your opinion. Other people have their opinion. Well, there is a right and wrong. When it's my opinion, it's right. And when it's somebody <laughs> else's opinion, it's wrong. Get that straight for crying out loud. Jeez <laughs> almighty. You ought to get at least a, what you, a half an hour or something like that, right? Hmm? You ought to have at least a half an hour of news. Well, I, I think that you go with yeah, the hard news, and then if you want to do your, your little uh, stuff about here we are in Paris and, you know, we got the Olympics and everything, you do all those towards the end of the newscast, not at the very top. You know, because what you're doing is you're saying it's more important than those guys getting released from Russia. And I'm sorry, that's a, that's a very important story today, you know. Um, and then there's other stuff, too, you know, that they, that they pushed on the back burner because we've got to show Simone Biles doing one more jump and flip, you know. I, I love watching Simone, but we also have the Hamas negotiator that I haven't heard a peep out of anyone on yeah. what's going on with that. Yeah. And the Middle East is going nuts over it, and we're here in our little bubble. You know? Yeah, watching They're Simone Biles jumping the, around. Uh, you know, and it's Fire. fine. You know, I mean, I think it's a wonderful story, and God bless her. You know, she's 27 years old, and she's at the top of her game. That's wonderful because in gymnastics, you're usually on the bottom end of your game at 27. You know, and it's a wonderful story, but it's not news. You know, mm -hmm. and 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 if you're gonna do it, at least do all the sports stuff at the end. Don't do it at the beginning. Uh, I just well, uh, enough of y'all complain. Hmm? I said, if enough of y'all complain, then they'll do that. No, 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 they won't. As you say, they spent like two hundred billion dollars for the Olympics, yeah. so they're going to get their money's worth. You know. It's kind of indicative of the way our country has gone, Alex. We're we're a, we're a country of being entertained. That's yeah. it. Well, yesterday at about ten of the hour. Lester Holt was doing a story where he was sitting in the stands watching something with Snoop Dogg. Now tell me how that even qualifies as sports. <laughs> you know? I mean, and Snoop Dogg, he's the, he's the, uh, uh, the left-wing version of, uh, of uh, you know, Hulk Hogan and uh, Kid Rock. Oh, he's yesterday's uh, news. Oh, but uh, Lester Holt, I spent the day with Snoop Dogg. Huh? There's a lot of Snoop Dogg on the Olympics. Awful lot of Snoop Dogg. Yes, uh, Vernon, you... Yeah, I'm saying big whoop. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> okay, I thought you were saying you wanted me to pay attention to you. No, um, I'm not a Snoop Dogg fan. Well, you know, it's fine. I, it's, you know, it's great, but, you know, he's okay. On, put him on Kimmel, you know. Put him on uh, Jimmy Fallon. But, you know, I'm, I don't want him on the 630 News, for crying out loud. You know? I mean, even if you're going to report the Olympics, don't say, oh, now here's Snoop Dogg. I'm watching it with Snoop Dogg. Look at my pal Snoop Dogg. <laughs> hey, you got to watch those women swimmers. Does he? <laughs> Those are the events I keep seeing him at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I don't like the women swimmers as much because they're in the water, so you can't yeah. see anything, okay? <laughs> but, you know, the, the gymnasts are great because they get good oh, wedgies yeah. going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, of course, the guys in, uh, in swimming, though, the guys uh, are, I think, a treat for the women out there. So, you know. Great swimmers' bodies, and then a bulge yep. down at the bottom. So that's nice, you know. That's good. Is that what we watch the Olympics for? <laughs> you know, probably. <laughs> we were. Uh, what was it when we were at the Olympics in uh, in Alberville, and we were staying in a um, in a, a chalet uh, up in uh, Kirchevel. 
And um, uh, we were sitting there watching the skaters, and we loved watching the skaters because as they would skate, they would be get big, a bigger and bigger uh, camel toe. <laughs> and and a bigger wedgie. So that was our our great thrill of the Olympics. So how are the Olympics today, Alex? Well, we gave it ten wedgies, you know. So. Excuse me, uh, I didn't want to do this, Roberta, in front of you, but you know, don't don't tell me women don't watch the guys swimming and so hey, look at that bulge in his pants. So you know, I'm not much of a woman. I'm in. Uh, I used to be an athlete and. Uh, I watch the Olympics for the athletic uh, prowess of both women and men. I, I'm, um, I'm fascinated by it. That anybody can even do that with the human body is just amazing yeah. to me. Yeah, my, my sport was swimming. Uh, I actually swam at a one of the uh, Yale University carnivals. The guy that taught, who in, was the instructor for a lot of the uh, for the a lot a lot of the early Olympic swimmers, his name was Moriarty, and he he was my teacher. And uh, I got to go and I did the Yale Carnival. And <laughs> that's another whole story because my parents were evil people and I ended up, uh, uh, we had wait, this What's that big... noise? What's that noise? Oh, I'm sorry, that's my bird. Well, wait a minute, your <laughs> bird sounds like a bell? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she plays with bells. Oh, she plays I see. with okay. balls. She right. plays with toys. She loves toys. Well, <laughs> at least, I, at least as long as I know what it is, I was just, I'm sorry. Was yeah, mystifying. no, it's not some weird, you know, like feedback or whatever. No. You won't, by the way, you only have one bird. No, I have three. You have three birds. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. a bird lady. Well, I used to be a cat lady. Ha ha. <laughs> but, uh, Katie Pants likes you then. You're not a cat lady. <laughs> well, I, I, I ended up going to the, uh, what is it, Sonora? I think it is the, in Arizona, the, um, there is a, uh, a, a desert museum. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked at these little burrowing owls. And they were adorable. And I mean, we, we started taking photos of them and they're sitting there looking at us going, hmm? Hmm? what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, oh, my God, these things are intelligent. <laughs> and then uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Dr. Pepperberg, who does the um, the research on African greys. But uh, that's what I ended up with with one of my birds is an African grey. And wouldn't you she... be surprised if I had heard of him? <laughs> it's a her. <laughs> Oh, her. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, actually, I wouldn't have been totally surprised because for a while she was making news because the bird could actually count and, and identify colors and give the answers back that were in context. In other words, she'd ask the bird, you know, how many yellow? And the bird would say three. <laughs> I mean, this wasn't like the, the horse, you know, it wasn't a Pavlovian thing where the human was giving any cues. She, I mean, she did her work out of oh. Harvard and uh, Tufts, I believe, University and all those places. And she ended up uh, you know, making big, uh, she, she, she made big news on, you know, she demonstrated. If you, any of you want to see so, an intelligent animal, maybe it's not your thing. But if you want to actually see a bird actually talking and responding to questions that are accurate, um, Alan Alda. Uh, mash person, he mm -hmm. went and interviewed her for a PBS thing. And I mean, no, wait a minute, she went up, and interviewed uh, the woman or interviewed the bird? Oh, it's actually. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, he he did a story on it because it's legit. That's the point. It's, it, it is legit. And the, the bird's name was Alex. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you won't forget the name of the bird if you want to look into the bird. Yeah. Anyway, so I mean, uh, 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 yeah, that's wonderful that you're into birds. I, I guess you had to you had to get rid of the cats before you got the birds, right? Yeah. Yeah, my my poor cat. He um, he lived till sixteen, which I guess you know that it was devastating to me. That's that it was a decent age for a cat. But I oh, I have one cat lived to be eighteen. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. You know, uh, I was devastated. But you're you're bothered I, more by that when it, when they go because I mean, come on, it's been eighteen years you've had this cat. 
you yeah. know? Uh, and he died, uh, gosh, I can't remember how old was I when he died. I was in my 60s, I think, when he died. And I had had him since I was 40. You know, that's a long time. So, mm. anyway, so Josh, been quite a week in the news, hasn't it? Yeah, there's quite a lot going on. Like you said, they have, you know, really been on the Olympics a lot. So, unless you're watching some of the more dedicated cable channels, you know, it's not as heavy. In well, the, it's, uh, there's enough oh, going yeah. on there. I mean, you know, I mean, Donald Trump with those black journalists was just a delight to watch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, uh, you know, them having him there is fine if that's what they want. I'm sure that they got what they expected. He was combative like he always is. So I'm not surprised about that. You know, he has to start it off with his little snipes and comments and you know i mean he's a dick so you know what do you expect but you know he just shows up and does what he does you know which is fine i mean let him keep acting like that i mean you know the the point you know his campaign is frustrated they say you know reports and things i read an article you know that basically just said you know there are people who are begging him to basically run against Harris's record and he just keeps talking about all this other stuff about her, you know, about her bar exam and I mean stuff that really people are not going to She isn't really black, she isn't really Indian. Yeah, and I mean, you know you what know, it that's is? not you know that's what it not is going to help him. He went back to his old playbook. That's the Obama playbook, right. which was birtherism. Mm -hmm. You know. She wasn't really born here. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't really. Is she you No, know, is she is she Indian or is she black? Well, maybe she can be both. Is that possible? I think it is, you know? Yeah, it just makes it, you know, I mean, it makes him look bad. Uh, it, I do think it turns independence off. And then it gives her an opportunity to look better. And very slowly, just at times, she could work in something about that that's a little catchy and remind people, you know, of what she's going for i mean you know i think if i were harris i would just say hey you know our campaign is about the future our campaign is not about the past their campaign seems to be about the past and you know speaking of that i mean listen he wants to talk about my race or my background you know i think the very simple answer here is if this were 1955 and this were alabama i would ride in the back of the bus okay yeah. so that's all that matters. And that isn't where our campaign wants better, to go. We better than that, better than that. They want to drag yeah. us back. That, better than that, if this were 30 years ago, your father wouldn't have rented to me. Yes. <laughs> you know? I mean. Yeah, there are a number of ways they could go with that, right? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's just amazing that, uh, you know, that, that we have to go through this. But uh, on the other hand, I think it's causing him to lose the election. I mean, yeah. let me ask Charlie. Charlie, I mean, how, I mean, I don't know if you d deal with the black community every day just because you're black, <laughs> but how do you think blacks are taking it? Because he he was saying that uh, the Trump was saying that he was going to get the black vote. Not anymore. <laughs> you, you pretty well think he's killed it. I think yeah, that one interview probably killed it. <laughs> well, also going after black women. You know, yeah. uh, black men are very protective of their mamas, you know, yeah. of their of their mothers, and uh, I don't think they like hearing somebody somebody badmouth a black woman. You know, and uh, it, it, it's it's sad. It's just sad. That we, yeah, we, I mean, I, you know, obviously there will be you know some some blacks who vote for him. And, and I know that he has some support in, within that. I mean, I, I can think of two people that I work with, for example, that I know like him a lot. Um, you know, both are, are you know, that are black. Um, you know, I mean, I guess I never really talked to him about it, but they come in with a, his T-shirt on and all the other stuff. So I, I'm making what I assume is a good assumption there. But, you know, by and large, you know, the thing is, if she is able to get even within... From, you know, what I've been looking at, 
like two or three percentage points of the high African American vote, and it's a good turnout that Obama did, that yeah. could shift the electorate in certain states by two and a half or three percent overall in her favor, which in you know PA and in Georgia, and Arizona states that were won by you know fifteen thousand votes and you know a hundred thousand that's that's a lot, you know, and. You know, it could make it so that those states maybe go to her and it's not even that close, you know, that the gap's a little wider so there, it doesn't take as long maybe to, to declare who won that state. I mean, you know, good, just positive stuff, you know. That's the thing about her campaign so far is I've seen a lot of positive movement from the campaign and also a lot of positive developments out of it. And with his, it all seems to be negative, not just in how he talks, but in the way that things are going as well. well here, you know? Here's something that Trump doesn't know how to do, okay? Let's say he's talking about Kamala Harris. Maybe to say something to the effect of, well, she's a worthy opponent and we just have a different set of ideas. And just leave the... But he immediately has to go for the jugular. He has to insult. You know, yep. and, and I don't think that's a, you know, that's a good way to play it. You know, he's three years old. What do you want from a three year old? Yeah. 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 I mean, that would probably serve him well, but he does not <laughs> seem interested in that, which I'm not surprised by. He's never been interested in that. And so I don't imagine that there's any reason for anybody, even the people that are on his campaign and like him and want him to win. I don't think there's reason for anybody to believe that in the last 100 days of this campaign, he suddenly will start saying things like that. Yeah. But he will not, you yeah. know, um, which I think is good news. The more he yeah. finds that he doesn't know how to fight Kamala Harris, you know, he knew what he, he had a playbook for, for Biden, okay? Yeah. But he doesn't have a playbook for Kamala Harris, and she has a lot of young mm. enthusiasm about her that he can't possibly muster. And so he's getting frustrated, and the more frustrating he gets, the more off off uh, point he goes. You know, uh, yeah. if, if somebody sitting there telling him what to do or not to do, he's not listening to them. You know, well, he said himself when he came back after all that, after he got a pinched in the ear, that uh, he was not gonna, he was not gonna go, he was gonna go back to his old self. I mean, he literally said that, and, and that I, doesn't, but by that's the, stupid. By the way, as long as you bring that up, they've shown pictures of his ear now. It's okay. perfect. It's about two weeks after it got shot, yeah. right? There's no scab, nothing. If you get shot by a bullet in the side of your ear, it even clips your ear. I mean, it takes a chip out of your ear. Or you think it would have a scab right? anyway. Yeah. Or a scab or something, yeah. And, I and guess it, that orange it, stuff. That orange stuff works pretty good. Methylate. <laughs> they put methylate on it. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, I mean, I, I, <clears throat> where, where's the, where's the, uh, where's, where's the bullet mm. thing? Well, it's, it's, you probably it's, had it's plastic possible. surgery. Mm. It, it's possible that if it got behind the ear a little, there is a vein there that yeah. bleeds profusely if yeah. you break it. But it's not any major damage. But if you, you know, that's where, where it could have happened. And that's why we don't see it. Who knows? That's just, you know, thoughts. Well, all know. I'm saying is that if he got hit in the ear, even with 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 uh, any amount of anything, he would have more of a scab there. He would have, you would be able to see a little nick or whatever. And it's not there. No. You know? I'm beginning, good plastic to, surgeons. I'm beginning to wonder whether he was really shot and he wasn't carrying a blood pack in his hand, you know, <laughs> a, what we call a squib in show business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, it just, it's just amazing. Just amazing. You know, I mean, the, the news so far has been positive, you know. I mean, the <laughs> polling is shifting slightly. You know, there are a lot of... In some, case, in, some, in some polls, it's shifting dramatically. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, perhaps. You know, I haven't seen anything that was huge, huge, but everything was very positive. A lot of reputable people who do it, you know, a lot. 
that, you know, we would sort of believe in, you know, people like Nate Silver and others have now basically moved it to a, you know, a, 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 basically a, a tie, you know, awesome. yeah. uh, you know, and there are some others that show that any lead that he had in the, in, in a couple of the important states in particular is gone. Um, you know, and, you know, like in Ohio, for example, where he's really not going to win another good sign though, is the fact that the latest polling that came out yesterday now shows Sherrod Brown, uh, one poll with a four point and another poll with a five point lead over Bernie Moreno for the U S Senate, which is critical for them, but is also yeah. showing that in this particular state, people who have always supported Sherrod Brown, uh, you know, are not buying into the lies and the stupidityness of this Moreno guy, which is a, a, this is a Trump guy. This is, you know, another J.D. Vance, you know. So well, who's the other senator from here? So, you know, this state just elected Vance. You know, it's gone to Trump the last two times. We'll go to him a third time, I'm sure. But someone like Sherrod Brown being able to hold his coalition here is very good news. And it also shows... Uh, you know, because I read the article with it, that Sherrod Brown's support amongst the 18 to 35 demographic is extremely high. You know, it's in the high 70s or 80 percent, basically. So if they can turn those people out, that's you know, obviously significant. Yeah. Um, well, also, you have to remember, so, you know, she's going to help do that more than Biden would. You, you got to remember, I, I think she's also just started. You know, yeah, right. she, he's been campaigning for ye for a couple of years now. She's only sure. just started. She can gain momentum. She's got momentum now, and that momentum could continue to where I think in 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 the national polling she could wind up being five percent ahead of Trump. Because well, yeah, we'll see. I mean, if he continues to basically run around and not really want to debate her, I, I, I think that's fine. I would, I hope that he doesn't. I would just let that. I bet he's not going go as to. long as it can, and she can just offer to do it every day, right up until the election. He says, "I don't need to and do it. They know who can, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah we know." Back and like are. a little bitch about it, you know. That's perfectly fine with me. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, at, at this point, him doing that only serves her. Very well, as far yeah. as I'm, I mean, I, 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 I would, if her, I were her camp, I would be praying that he doesn't actually want to do the debate. And then we can keep asking for one every day and he can keep not doing it. And that is, that would be excellent news, I think. So he thinks he's putting one over by not doing it or what? I mean, I don't know. I guess I don't know what he thinks. But, but he did make a, gr he did make a, a great promise, which is a good election ploy. He told people that if you vote for me, you'll never have to vote again. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I think, yeah. you know, I hate voting. I don't know about you. It's just something I just find disgusting. Uh, and, and I'd be if, out of a job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope Trump would lose one, too. Don't worry. You'll never have to vote again if you vote for me. Oh, right. Oh, okay. well, I, 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 I go, I don't go by the polls, the polls. Mm, I go by the bookies. <laughs> Who do the bookies choose? Oh, They're usually pretty yeah. good in politics. I'll, I'll, bet never lose, right? I'll, I'll bet their money right now is on her. <clears throat> I'll bet. I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked at it. Look at Nate Silver because he's a, he's a gambling guy. That's why that's where he gets all his uh, statistics and so on, where he's been so good at it. Well, the fact that she was Doesn't able he to change other? it. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say the fact that she was able to change it from the situation that we were in to the situation we're in now in 10 days without really doing anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, is very good. Oh, this yeah. is an wrong, excitement. Doesn't they, Nate Silver just uh, average other polls? Then he just bring together data from other polls? Yeah, but but he was a, a sports guy. He used to like uh, put the odds out on sports, so he uses that same odds making uh, that he used in okay. sports and applies it to to this stuff to the polling. Uh, yeah, polls. I mean, you know, who 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 believes the polls? Well, you know, uh, if if they're doing them, if their methodology is good, they can be pretty good. But a lot of them. You know, it, it's the trouble is there's sometimes 
one company that has one methodology as opposed to another. And some mm -hmm. of the right-wing pollsters uh, are, are disgusting. I mean, they, they're, you know, Trump is 80 billion percent ahead of everybody else. You know, but they load the questions when they ask them, and they yeah. get the answers they want. So, you know, it, it's what poll you're talking about. And I think you go with with uh, a lot of the the major polls, and I think they're okay. All right, mm -hmm. you know, I think that they they at least try their best. Uh, a few years they got blindsided because they didn't know what they were doing exactly. But. So, well, there were a couple of Fox News and Wall Street Journal polls, you know, that had you know, like the PA race with his three point lead down to nothing, you know, with, uh, you know, Michigan now leaning Democrat. You know, I mean, so I mean, I mean, even polls that, you know, if you didn't like them, you could say, oh, you know, Fox News poll or whatever. I mean, which I, I think all places take polls and I'll take them all for what they're worth. But, you know, even those organizations are. I mean, they can't, they can't skew it too much if, if the results are what they are. You know, if she um, keeps doing what she's doing, she's going to win. Yes, just stay positive. I, 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 I think she's brought an excitement to, the, to politics and to this race. She's brought mm -hmm. a youthfulness to it, even though she's not the youngest person in the, in, in the group. Uh, but, you know, she is, is certainly presenting a, a good uh, face on this whole thing. And I'm thrilled. I mean, I, I get, uh, in, I watch her and she's warm and she's genuine and she's all the things that we haven't been able to put, learn in politics in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And the trouble is she's not Biden either. Who Somebody mentioned they were, she was going up a flight of stairs to the airplane, right, going up the... Uh, up the thing on the airplane. And uh, somebody asked her a question. And as she's walking, she looks over and she's, she answers the person while she's still walking. And somebody <laughs> mentioned, it's been a long time since you've seen that. <clears throat> you know? Um, so, I mean. Well, who do you think she'll pick for her, uh, her running mate, uh, Alex? I, I, I really don't know. Shapiro is not a great idea. Or as Marjorie calls him, Shapiro. She says that's the way we pronounce <laughs> it in Philadelphia. Well, yeah. that's not the way Fox, Shapiro... Fox News has said that the, there's been a quote-unquote leak that it's Shapiro, but who knows? I think I th I, if I were to put a bet, I would probably say it's Kelly. You know? Uh, only that's what because, I'm thinking. Huh? Uh, he, what I'm he's he's the most logical. Uh, he's an American hero, astronaut. You know, uh, there's no bad stuff about the guy. Good husband who took <clears throat> care of his wife Gabby Giffords when she was after she got shot and and all of that. And he, he just helped uh, grab another blue state. Yeah, grab a blue state. Shapiro, on the other hand, has a major deficit. He's Jewish. And being Jewish, well, so is her husband. What? So is her yeah. husband. Well, <clears throat> yeah, his her husband is Jewish, but that he's not running the country, you know. He's just simply, you know, has her back. Okay, we're talking about Shapiro. If you if you put him in as a nominee for vice president, that means he's a heartbeat away from the presidency. Which doesn't make a lot of Palestinians in this country very happy. Okay. So, and uh, also he's been such a good governor in, in Pennsylvania. It's better he stay there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just like our governor, our governor, Andy Bashir. I, I hope he's not picked because I want him to run for Mitch McConnell's seat. Yeah. In the mm -hmm. Senate. Uh, Which is two it, years from now. You know, I, uh, um, I, I know, um, our, our good friend here, Roberta, has argued with me that this is not a good idea. But I, I, I'm, I'm a little partial to Pete Buttigieg, only because he brings a youthfulness to the whole thing. You know, as and he's very intelligent. Yeah, he's he very talks so well too. Even the Fox viewers. Yeah, I mean, he's a. He's well, a, Charlie, he, did did you remember when he in Indiana? had announced his supporters and posted his supporters 
and oh, they yeah. were supposed to the black supporters that weren't black and didn't support him. In fact, we're shocked <laughs> that they were yeah. on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. Listen, I'm, you, I'm not happy with that guy. No, youthful no. mistakes on his part. I think he's, oh, as he's become Secretary of Transportation, I think he's done a pretty good job, except for that big gaffe you talked about, you know, which yeah. uh, was not a, not a good moment for him. But then again, that was years ago now yeah uh and and he i think has grown i think he's a good uh, he's good at arguments you know yeah. and i think he presents oddly enough a, a family element into this thing yeah. in that he has how many children two children they've two. adopted yeah. yeah and it is a uh a very good relationship he has with his husband or wife or whatever, I don't know, his husband. Um, husband. And uh, they, uh, they show that gays can be as good parents and as good families as your traditional families, all right? And I, I think America would accept him. I don't think him being gay would be a big deal. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it would be with some people, but you know, they're also not going to vote for the black yeah. woman either. You know, yeah. so I mean, uh, well, I'm I'm still concerned that he's not going to be good for us, but he will be good for getting elected. I think he might I'll be go good for that. the ticket because he brings. He, she has brought a youthfulness to it. He yeah. could double down on that youthfulness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, I mean, and I've said they've trodden him out on a lot of the talk shows this week, and he's yeah, he, been spectacular. Yes, just spectacular. You know, so, and you got to give the the guy a certain chance to improve and get better, and uh, change his ways. You know, when he was the mayor of uh, what was it? Uh, what town? South Bend. South Bend. Huh? South Bend yeah. South Bend, Indiana. Yeah, South Bend, Where Indiana. Where Notre Dame is. Yeah, I mean that was the beginning of his political career. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. So, but he yeah, but lying up. shouldn't be part of it, should it? <laughs> hey, it works for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> True. I I don't know. I think you're being a little harsh on Booth. Well, he. I mean, he also did other things. I mean, he had the the scandal with the um, I can't remember if it was police or fire, mm. uh, the chief. And he also tried to tell us that uh, he he was all for universal health care because we would we would have choice. That's OK. You know, it, it's all right. You know, things won't change that much, but you would at least have choice. You know, that we've heard that argument many times. Yeah. But anyway, I, I don't think it's going to be him, but I think it could very well be Mark Kelly. I think that's probably, if I were to tell her who to choose, Mark Kelly would probably be the choice, but he is older. Yeah. So he, he kind of so drags anti down. Hmm? What were you going to say? Go for it. I was going to say, she, he, he kind of will drag down that youthfulness that, that uh, yeah. Kamala has presented to the public. So that's why I'm saying mm -hmm. Buttigieg is the best idea, but that's just me and I don't. What do I know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as like the balls hmm? in, in Minnesota, I mean, he is. You look at what he's done up there; it's just amazing. Yes. Who's, who's that? The governor Tim of Minnesota. Walls. Tim Walls of Minnesota. Tim Walls. Tim Walls. Yeah. That's my governor person. Walls. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yep. yeah. No, but, the the, 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 the only problem with Mark Kelly that I see is is electability. I, I would like to see Mark Kelly personally mm. anyway, but the problem is Mark Kelly, um, he, we have the, the people that we need to grab are the never Trumpers and the independents. And the problem is that Mark Kelly with his anti-gun, um, yeah. I mean, you just, when you say, you know, anti-gun, well, uh, the you, name Mark you, Kelly wait, just wait, comes wait, to head, your, your head. Your wife, so got, that's, your wife got, your wife got, shot in the head, I yeah. think you're going to be against guns, okay? Yeah, except that if you're trying to pull in the Never Trumpers and you're trying to pull in the independents, that could be a problem. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Not, you know, not that, I mean, right. I, an but American he, hero is a great vice president. There's no question. 
I didn't think he was actually anti-gun. He was more gun regulation. Yeah, except that he's... Because he owns guns. Well, he's pretty hardcore in the ads. I don't know. You're, you're right. <laughs> but the problem is he. there's a lot of ads that have been out there that have influenced people who've seen the ads. But maybe, you know, maybe not enough mm. people have seen them. And maybe... You, but you're right. You're right. Of course. Well, we've because, been joined, yeah, by I, the way. I, I, yeah. I know that he was, he was not anti-gun per se, but he, he's more mm-hmm. gun regulation, which I think a lot of people are, and I think that's not bad. Yeah. By you the know. way, we've been joined by Don Giller, mm-hmm. and, and really? oddly enough, uh, we've been mm-hmm. joined by Don Giller early. <laughs> in so just show. let him sit there and be quiet then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pretend he's not there. Nobody say anything about Charlene. Hi, Charlene. Hi. Hi Charlene. <laughs> But I mean, uh, yeah. Don Don wrote me today or last night and said, "I hope you don't mind me calling at the last mm-hmm. moment." And I said, "No, I like it. You know, it's kind of almost a, it could get to be a, a regular joke." But you're calling too early tonight. <laughs> yeah, thanks for keeping that confidential. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, in terms of betting odds, uh, th- I've, I found there are three articles that are conflicting. Forbes says that Harris takes first lead over Trump in election betting odds. Ashbury Park Press says that Harris is catching up, and Las Vegas Review Journal uh, says that Trump's election betting odds plummet as Harris narrows gap. Why don't you just go to the Harris book? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You could probably drop a bet on it right now. Yeah. And, and the other thing, if, if I can, uh, about the VP, mm. the goal is to win the election. Yeah. Harris is going to announce her VP pick on Tuesday in Philadelphia. What does that tell you? That sounds like she's going to be in Philadelphia. Going to ring a bell. That sounds like Shapiro. Exactly, and <laughs> and that that will solidify no. Pennsylvania. He won't, she won't need Arizona. There's a reason why she's doing it on 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 uh, 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 Tuesday. She's going to be in Philadelphia. She was going to be there to give a speech. She right. also has to announce by Tuesday. Otherwise, they're going to have a hard time getting the vice president on all the uh, on all the ballots across the country. So she has right. to do it by that day. Okay. No, I understand that. Um, but what if she does not pick Shapiro in Philadelphia? That's not good for Pennsylvania for, for picking up those electoral votes. And mm-hmm. and if she gets if she solidifies Pennsylvania, she won't need Minnesota. He's she's gonna win Minnesota, but she yeah. won't need Arizona. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the goal, to win the election, not to find the, the most qualified candidate. Usually who you pick for your vice president isn't a serious pick. You know, in this case, it became a fortunate pick, oddly enough, where yeah. Biden was concerned. And 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 I, I kind of I've changed my tune about Shapiro and his and his Jewishness, because I, I think back to Kennedy, and his Catholicism, and and what a stink that had promised to be, but it turned out it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think that the Jewishness, sure, people will vote against them because of his Jewishness. But I don't think enough will to hurt. Well, well they're, what, they're, what they're saying is the problem with his Jewishness is not that, uh, you know, that certain people are anti-Semitic and won't vote for a Jew. But it has to do with the Palestinian vote in this country, the Islamic right. vote. How important is the Palestinian vote in this country? Well, in how, Michigan, how, it's how, huge. They are something like, I can't remember. I used to know the statistics. Five to ten percent of the population of Michigan and yeah. the pockets and the major pockets of the Palestinians are in those areas that are key. So, mm-hmm. so. yeah, okay, no, I had not considered that. That's a good point. Yeah, but I mean, I I think, uh, um, you know, I think that uh, it, it, it's really um, I don't know that the fact that he's a Jew is a problem, uh, but as I've said before. We may have black presidents. We may have mixed race 
presidents. We may have Catholic presidents. We may have whatever <laughs> presidents. But the one thing I never envisioned is that we'd ever have a Jewish president. Well, you're old. <laughs> well, it could be, you know. As, uh, as we all are. You know, but I mean, of course, Shapiro, if, he, if she were to bring him in and they serve two terms, okay, he would probably be the next person in line to run for president. Yeah. You know, and the question is, could a Jew win for president? I, I, I just don't see why not. I'd yeah. never, I'd if, never, if, I'd if never. they can elect Obama. I'd never vote for him, but then again, I'm anti-Semitic, so. Uh, right. <laughs> again, APAC is the, uh, is, the, if, if they like him, then he's in. I mean, that's where most of the donation money is coming from these days. I, I, I trust him to be, to finesse that. So are we betting, well, well, that, are we well, betting well, that it's going to be, that it's going to be Shapiro? Yeah. How many here agree with that? Mm. Huh? I think Mark Kelly has just as good a chance. Yeah. What do you, ten, uh, bucks. Ten, ten bucks? Yeah. Ten bucks, I got you. Okay. But then well, again, if, if I bet you ten bucks, we'll never see each other anyway yeah, right. to pay <laughs> off the bet. So, you it's know. It's symbolic. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, hello to uh, Bree, who is in Malaysia. Mm. Kuala Lumpur. Hello, how are you? How I you hope you can hear me. What? I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. Are you in a restaurant? No, I'm outside of a restaurant, Starbucks. Uh huh. How hot is it there? At, uh, this is, oh, it's always between like 80 and 90. Sometimes it can sound to 75. Sometimes it goes up to 95. But it's always between 75 and 95. Is it humid? It can be. It can be on many days. Today's not so bad. Uh, you get used to it. Because New York has been just god awful humid. You know, we keep the back of this apartment air conditioned, and the front, we don't even go out there hardly at all. When we go out there, it is so damp as you walk through the through the air. You know, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. how yeah, humid. but I, I, I think. Uh, I think you notice it more because you have a you have this rain, but here it's always the same. It's always a little bit thick. It's always there. So like if you came over here, you'd be like, "Oh my God, it's so humid," and I'd be like, "No, this is actually pretty good rain." Yeah. <laughs> you know. So I think it's what you're used to. Uh, Don, do you have your air conditioner on all the time right now? It, it barely works. I need to get a new one. Oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. But there's no space for anyone to come in to to replace it. Yeah, and there's no place <laughs> behind all those books. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. But you, yeah. In fact, it's it's, over, it's right there. That's the air conditioner. It's, it's right over there. Really? No, it's it's. Oh, it's been, you can't oh, touch oh, it. Oh, but. Okay. Well, you get a new air conditioner. They're cheap enough, you know. Yeah. What do you usually get? A twelve hundred BTU or eleven hundred BTU or? A... Not me, I don't know. I I yeah. Five thousand. I just don't 5, pay it out. 5,000 is a typical room air conditioner. A what? Yeah. What did you say? 5,000 BTU is a typical room air conditioner. Yeah. Really, this one here is six. And the one in my bedroom is, tw I think, 12, 11, 12. Yeah. Because it's, it just gets so hot in here, you know, that we, we need that. So, you know. But the thing's been on since, for three months now. You yeah. know, we haven't turned it off. You know, but we have it on the auto thing where it stops and it starts and it stops and it starts. And, you know. But, uh, oh, look, what's out there that uh, we're seeing in Malaysia? We're seeing trees and we're seeing sidewalk. And, uh, but we're not seeing Bree right now, so, you know. He's looking, looking for the babe. Huh? He's looking for the babe. Oh, he's looking for the babes. Oh, plenty. Yeah, they they got yeah, some good-looking uh, women in Malaysia, believe it yeah. or not. Oh, there he. Oh, he's walking. Oh, okay. So he's giving us a little walking tour now. Oh. This is lunchtime. Why aren't there more people on the streets? Well, it could be. It's a hot day there. You uh, know. No, it's not that hot. I'm just I'm in the back area. 
Oh, I see. We'll it. see you in a minute. You want to see people? I'll, I'll show you. Uh, people. We want to see the minutes. hot babes, okay? Okay, you got it. Be <laughs> because we're sexist pigs. Um, I'm heading to the American. Post wait a minute. What is that? Area. Wait a minute. What is this? What is that a picture of? Your air That's a picture of your air conditioner. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Is that an actual picture of your air conditioner? Yes, it is. Why did you take a picture of your air conditioner? I, I wanted to steal the thunder. I wanted I wanted to be the attention giver. No, but it's not just <laughs> it's not just a, a a small picture of your air conditioner. It's an eight by ten. It's like, oh, you know. I, I took it with my iPad. iPad. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you just did it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we could see it. So let me see it again. <laughs> you know, this is how we end the week here with Don Giller and entertainment. Uh, oh, yeah. let's see here. What kind of an air conditioner is that? That looks to be a. Uh, there we go. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's like. Is that like an LG? Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. You never even looked, huh? <laughs> I I don't care. Yeah. Well, I have a frigid air in here, and I have. As long as it LG. doesn't ice over, you're good. What I have yeah. is I have an LG with a Wi-Fi, and now when I'm out, you know, I turn off the air conditioner when we leave, and then when we're going home, and we're out, I just turn it on from out in the road. Yeah. You know? it, it's cool, really cool. It's really terrific. So. Hmm. How much did they cost? Do you remember? Uh, I think you can pick them up if, if you want. Uh, if, I don't know. Do you, you don't know the BTU of what you currently have? I mean, I, I have the, the data, but who knows where it is? See, if you if you want like a five thousand BTU, that only run you about one hundred and fifty bucks, maybe. You know, but if you want a they've gone up. Yeah, but if you want a twelve, oh, yeah, if up. you want a twelve hundred or something Three, like that, bucks. uh huh. A twelve thousand rather cost you three four hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's you know. But maybe it could be there's nothing wrong with your air conditioner. When's the last time you replaced the uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it the, uh, the screen? The screen. Yeah. Filter. You can, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That could make it work better. I actually have a light that goes off on mine that says, hey, well, you need to have your, your screen cleaned. So I have to pull it out and put it over the sink and clean it up, you know. This is good information. Tell me again. What? <laughs> what do you... What do you... <laughs> oh, look at wait, the panda wait, wait, wait. bear. Hold oh, my on God. A no. Oh, look, wildlife in Malaysia. <laughs> wait a minute. Tell me, uh, Bree, Bree... Well, what's yeah. the what's the bear right. about? That looks like a bit on uh, Letterman for crying out loud. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're all around here. There's there's a bunch of different ones. There's a there's like a cat over there, and it, then over there there's a I guess another teddy bear. And and are they promoting anything, or is it just uh, they do it no, to make everybody it's just feel tips, good? Tip spots. Huh? I mean, Chinese spies. I mean, here we just have ratty-looking Sesame Street creatures on the street corners yeah. in New York City. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Like, and people take pictures with them, and they pay like twenty dollars, right? Yeah, and they're wearing these ratty uh, outfits. I mean, they're terrible. They're just terrible. Yeah. But that 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 panda looked terrific. You know, yeah. it looked uh, really good. And and. Uh, Let's see here. There are a lot of people out there now. Now we're finally. Now going. we see the people. Yeah. Oh, this is. It's not that many. This is very light. Another hour, it'll be packed here. But right now, it's pretty, pretty light. What time is it out there right now? Oh, we're coming up on noon. On noon. Okay. We're coming up on noon. And I... Okay, so you're tw you're twelve hour difference between us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, look at that! There we yeah. go. What is that? What kind of animal is that? Well, it's a cat. It's push a it cat over. <laughs> yeah, push it over. There's a lot of uh, promotional things going on today. Like which direction does? Which direction does the toilet flush? 
It's still the northern hemisphere. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't matter. No. It's uh, in Malaysia. The, it does. I think that, when, that, well, when you go a, down, when a, you, an urban legend. A no, legend. when you go down to Australia, the the, the water the goes. On a no, different... that's what that's what they say. But they're the 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 um, direction of the swirl is actually controlled by the device that you're using. No, no. Um, I think that if you pour water into a sink, into the drain. Read, read up on it. The science is there, believe me. I, I did, used to think that. Too. My, my father told me that when I was a kid. I believed it my whole life, as it turns out. I it's believed actually, it all my life. My father didn't tell me shit. <laughs> Why why destroy our dreams? I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. It flushes the other direction. No problem. Okay. No, but supposedly it, it goes differently well, when yeah, wherever you drive on the right side of the road, the toilet goes the backwards. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I flush my toilet, it goes down. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Coriolis effect. Huh? Yeah. It's what? the Coriolis effect. Is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. And is it's it true that it's a, it swirls differently in Australia That's than it does here? It's because yeah, and if you, you flush equipment. it up with wait, a wait a minute. Listen, he's a scientist. This guy. This is a, this is a space a rocket scientist. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> the equator is actually spinning faster at a faster speed than say 30 degrees north latitude and so that's why if something goes from south to north it's going it's actually spinning faster so it curves in the faster direction it yeah. curves to the right when you're up north so in antarctica it curves to the left when you're down south so in antarctica or the north pole it just doesn't flush at all no if you flush it it comes <laughs> back on you it comes down. back on you <laughs> I, I, notice they're, I think we're the clothes are all dirty sense. and they smell funny. I think we're all talking smack is what we're doing here. <laughs> you know. You realize that the North Pole. I've never seen a toilet. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Another fact from 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 uh, uh, Charlie. From you know. At, at the North Pole, Charlie. Every direction you look at is south. Of course. There's no east, west, or whatever. It's all. If south. you are right at the North Pole, the only yep. way you can go. When you move off the North wow. Pole, you're going south. Yep. yep. But is there ice there anymore? I mean, I thought I thought it was just now all water. I mean, it's ice. almost in the summer. It's almost gone. The ice cap in the in the Arctic is almost completely gone during the summer now. And the South Pole goes north. Yeah. Any play, if you're on the South Pole, any direction you go in is 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 well, north. Well, the minute you the minute you walk off the South or North yeah. Pole, well, the, the South North Pole, let's say, then yeah. then no matter which way you walk is East West whatever. You fall <laughs> off the Earth. That's right, Don. <laughs> See, Don knows these you things. You know. I used to be an astronaut. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, I think it's time to play a theme here. Can you, you can hear it now, right? Yes. Hey, yes. I learned how to do it. Wow. I've gotten smart. <laughs> hey, listen, it's been a great night tonight. This is a, a nice <laughs> bunch. We have uh, Jeff and we have uh, Josh and we have Charlie and we have our old friend Vernon. And, of course, uh, there is the, our newest addition to the program, Roberta. Kevin's been here. Kevin's terrific. Charlene, good having you here tonight, dear. And, uh, uh, of course, out in Malaysia, it's the lovely and attractive Bree. And then, finally, we finish off the whole thing with Don Giller, who actually called, right. all her, <laughs> called early enough tonight uh, to talk about stuff. Where, where did where did that uh, home smart where did that come from? What? Steve Martin? What? I mean, you did. I'm I'm being smart. No. Where did that come from? I'm being smart. Yeah, huh? I said that earlier. Oh, I don't remember no, that. No, smart. I, I'm, I don't know what you. No, refer you said it like a minute ago. Who? I said it. Um, yeah. 
You said all I'm being smart. Well, I'm you know, being smart. Very well, I was, just, I was just being goofy. Yeah, you know, I was trying to pretend. Yeah, but that, that, that comes from somewhere. Yeah, well, anyway. Hey, listen, thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. We really enjoyed it. And hopefully mm -hmm. we'll see you again uh, next Wednesday. And uh, in the meantime, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our, uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight, and uh, it's good to have them here. Uh, we'll uh, have another citizen panel coming up right now with uh, Amy Manuel. She'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show. Uh, that will be on Facebook. And then we'll see you next uh, Wednesday at uh, 1030 Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. This is a test for the next 60 seconds.